Hi guys, my name is Omar and I'm a final year medical student at the University of Nottingham and for those of you that follow my Instagram, you will know that I recently finished my medical school finals and in this video I partnered up with Pass Test and we'll be breaking down the UK MLA exams. We'll be going through the differences between previous medical school finals and the new UK MLA exams as well as my experience sitting these exams, how to prepare for finals, what this means for international medical graduates and how the pass mark is set. In the description you'll find a link to the Pass Test website where you can check out their online revision platform which has everything from built-in revision videos to question banks to mock papers. It's a great one-stop shop for everything you need to pass the UK MLA exams. We'll start at medical school, the GMC announced the introduction of the UK MLA exams, otherwise known as the Medical Licensing Assessment, which would be replacing finals from 2025 and would be compulsory in all UK medical schools. However, many medical schools, such as mine, opted to pilot it in 2024 for the very first time. The aim of introducing a standardised national exam was to reduce the discrepancies between recent graduates, to make sure that all newly qualified doctors had the same skill set and knowledge in order to practice safely. The main changes are that one, the medical school finals would not be set by each individual medical school, two, you will not be ranked by your school and it would simply be pass fail, three, it will now be testing your knowledge of the entire five year course, now instead you sit two AKT knowledge papers in your final year. These are each made up of a hundred single best answer questions. This means that they are multiple choice, but not necessarily where only one option is correct, but there may be several correct options within the answers, but only one of them is the most appropriate or the best. And each paper has to be set within 24 hours of each other. And each paper, although they'll both assess medicine, surgery, and core specialties like that, some specialties will only be found on one paper. For example, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, psychiatry, ENT. I'll include the photo our medical school showed us, which shows the differences between the specialties in paper one and the specialties in paper two. You'll have approximately two hours to complete the exam. And I have to say, it is quite time pressured. Um, I would say, within the two hours you don't really have time to check back your answers but you're not exactly running out of time to finish the paper. OSCEs are now being replaced by something known as the CPSA, the Clinical Professional Skills Assessment, which is still very similar to the OSCE exam so I'm not going to delve into that too much. It's still made up of several stations which are timed where you'll be expected to do histories, examinations, documentation, procedures, prescribing under timed conditions and you'll be tested across four domains including communication, clinical reasoning, professionalism. So perhaps the biggest change that is the most overwhelming for medical students is the amount of content that they'll be testing you on. Now no longer are your final exams simply what you've been learning in your final year, it tests you across the whole five years and includes early subjects that you will have been taught such as statistics. My advice is to start practicing active recall and spaced repetition as early as possible using online revision platforms and question banks like Pass Test. I started halfway through third year which is when I started placement but if I'm honest there's no harm in starting earlier than that. Even in my first and second year would have given me way more times to actually memorise the facts. I've said before and I'll say it again, research has shown that you need to hear a fact five to seven times before it transfers from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. Now the more time you give yourself to learn and hear these facts five to seven times, the better you'll understand and the better your score will be. If you want to know more about how I revise for finals and how I suggest that you learn on placement, then I'll be linking a playlist in the description and you'll see it come up on the screen. Just click it, follow it, so that you can stay up to date with all my medical school finals videos. If you're an international medical graduate, otherwise known as an IMG, this is what you can expect. The AKT exam will now replace the PLAB exam, which can still be sat worldwide. PLAB 2 will now be replaced by the CPSA exam, the Clinical Professional Skills Assessment, which must be sat in Manchester and you will likely have to pay fees for sitting both exams. In terms of pass mark, it's important to remember that there is no set pass mark, such as let's say 40% that you are required in order to pass your exams. The MLA and the UK MLA exams are very similar. Although they're derived from different question banks, both the MLA exams sat by international medical graduates and the UK MLA exams sat by UK medical graduates are very similar. So they're derived from similar but not the same question banks. They're pass fail and they have no fixed pass mark. Now let's take a look more closely about how the pass mark is actually set. 
So the way my medical school explained to me how the exam pass mark is set is use something called standard setting. If you want to know more, then just look up this. I'll include the name here, the modified Androff standard setting method for grading exams. Now, I hope you found this video helpful in explaining what the new UK MLA exams involve because a lot of medical schools don't take the time to explain this properly and then everyone's like sending angry emails. Definitely make sure to check past test, um, including the blog they wrote about what the new UK MLA exams involve. They're a great revision platform that I definitely recommend.